Hey guys, so this video is going to be talking about how the air vane type governor works on a lot of push mower engines. It's also used on a lot of older uh, side shaft or horizontal shaft engines like the smaller tiller engines and stuff. Uh, but the basic principle is the same on anything with an air vane governor. Some of the newer push mowers will have an air vane governor and also an air powered choke that works the same way. This does not have that choke. This engine don't have a choke at all. But I will uh, talk about how the choke works on it too. So we get the bolts out of the flywheel cover. I'm going to take the air breather off so we can look at everything. Any type of governor works the same. It just, this one works off of air, whereas the mechanical type will work off of RPMs directly inside the engine with weights that sling out. I've talked about it before. We'll make a video on that someday too. But I've been asked about this to make a video on it before, so I figured why not since I was working on this push mower. So what's going on here, when the engine's running, you see this flywheel has fins on it. So when it's spinning, the blade breaks on, but it's you know, blowing air constantly out of this. So it can, the shroud can direct it across the cooling fins to keep the engine from overheating because it's an air-cooled engine. It's not water-cooled like a vehicle engine, so it has to have air flowing across everything. If you notice this little piece right here, this is the actual governor itself, the air vane governor. So when the engine's running, this is going to be all the way out if this is set to idle. Because when the engine's idling, this is going to be out all the way. And when you put more spring tension, it overcomes the force of the air, so it allows it to open up. Then, so this, once your spring tension set, you know it's going to be running at a throttle about like this. So you get into some heavy grass and your RPMs start dropping, so the airflow starts dropping. So this is going to come in just a little bit like this due to the spring tension to give it more throttle to regulate the RPM. That way, you know, when this is dropping, it's maintaining the RPM. That's letting the carburetor compensate for the loss of RPMs by giving it more throttle. It regulates the RPMs. So sometimes you'll hear an engine kind of surge a little bit. It gets under load, so it might be doing this just trying to balance itself out, or if it's out of adjustment, if it's a mechanical governor. Most of the time, they won't do that too much on these, but you can hear the engine making like a louder, like a smacking sound from the exhaust the more the throttle opens because it's letting more air and fuel into the cylinder. That's what's required to maintain the RPMs. Kind of like in a vehicle, you know, you're driving along the interstate at you know, a quarter throttle, and you start going up a hill. You know, if you don't give it throttle, unless you get the cruise control set, you know, you have to give the gas, give it a little bit of gas to compensate for going up a hill. You know, kind of like on a vehicle, you're, you're the governor of the vehicle in a way. Unless it's set for cruise control, then you're going to have a similar setup like this that's electronically controlled on most vehicles, mechanically on the old vehicles, and would actually work very similar to a governor like this, regulating miles per hour instead of engine RPM because you get going up a hill in a vehicle and it's going to probably downshift to another gear or something and your RPMs will go up but it's maintaining the miles per hour but the point of that is it's just you know the regulation of how something like this will control the speed of something you know I think governors are always really interesting how they work especially how simple these are hope that makes sense uh, but the main thing is you know like you see right now where normally if the engine was running it'd be like this where it's not running you know, it's trying to run it at wide open throttle to compensate for the low RPM. You know, so if you set it to a lower setting, you can see it spring off. You know. And you notice these two springs here, as I talked about on the previous video. The small one sets the governed idle speed, and this big one sets your full throttle setting, so you can, you know, fine tune the low and the high. Okay, so I was going to briefly talk about how a air vane choke would work. And uh, a lot of carburetors have that on the newer engines made in the last 10 years or so. And there'll be a second air vane like this. It looks very similar to this. And it'll be under spring tension, kind of like this is. But, so it'd be like this while the engine's, you know, not running. And it would move a linkage just like this to close the choke. So to shut the choke, the air intake off almost. Then as soon as the engine actually starts the RPMs start coming up so the airflow increases so it'll overcome the tension of the spring and therefore 
open the choke up. So it works basically the same, but kind of backwards as the airbag governor. Uh, hope that makes sense. I wish I had one I could show you on, but I don't have one. Uh, but it's, it's very similar to this. So I hope that makes sense. If you got any questions, I'll try to answer them. Uh, if there's another setup like this you'd like to see, if I have an engine like that, we'll look at it. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, thanks for leaving a comment. And if you got any suggestions on videos similar to this, feel free to leave a comment because I want to make videos on what you all want to see the most I can. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you later.